I wanted to, since we are here uh, talking about notation, and I've been working on a specific type of notation for a few years, uh, what we call live coding, I think it's very relevant to uh, this gathering here. And I think uh, it is uh, appropriate to, to present it and perhaps some new findings or new ideas that I um, have been thinking about uh, regarding live coding. So I think most of you know live coding. Um, is there anyone who doesn't know? No. So the, I mean, it's it's very heterogeneous practice. All kinds of performances, dance, different groups, uh, network performances, uh, visuals. It's almost always projected, projected, but it doesn't have to be. Uh, but it's about the act of writing a software in real time and change it while it's running. So it's like you're building an instrument, but you're also changing the instrument. Or like uh, it's it's almost like a potter doing something with clay. You build something up and then you're kind of morphing it, and that whole act becomes the performance. So we often talk about live coding being about exhibiting the thought process. We're composing live, uh, but it's not just composition. It is improvisation. Uh, you it doesn't make sense to live code a prescripted piece. Um, it's about improvisation, it's about the real time of uh, composition and projecting it. And the interpreter is typically a machine, but it doesn't have to be. Uh, this sum no, Last summer I, I live coded a human marimba player. Uh, I wrote code and she read <coughs> the code and performed. So it was easy to do all kinds of loops and if statements and case statements and so on. She, she knew the, the language and she could follow the instructions. And that was a kind of a notational language that we don't have available in uh, common Western uh, notation. So live coding uh, kind of emphasizes the real time, emphasizes the act of of um, writing from scratch. Often we talk about tabula rasa. It doesn't have to be like that, but sometimes people come up with their own um, software and are just changing parameters. We call that CJing, code jockeying. Um, but that's, um, that's maybe not, as, as Nick Collins says here, you know, that's not the profound live coding that he's calling for in his um, in his paper from 2011. So code is obviously musical notation, that's no question. It, it can be read by machines, it can be read by humans. Um, expression, speed, openness, um, these are concerns. We need to have a language that we can write in quickly. We need to have interpreters that can respond quickly. Um, and it's also about mediation, communication between the audience and the performer, the composer and the machine. So you're kind of trying to communicate and respond uh, in the, in, at the same time. <coughs> but unlike many of the systems that we've had um, presented today, I think we could maybe claim that lab coding is oral culture, uh, paradoxically that we, uh, we are writing, it's all about text, it's all about coding and notation, but it is a culture where we don't stu study each other's pieces, they don't exist after the performance, they disappear, we never save, or very few people save the performances. Um, they disappear, they're not listened to again, you wouldn't want to render it again, because why wouldn't you just create a new piece, perform again? Um, it really emphasizes improvisation. Um, it is about the notation as a performance, so it's almost the, that the notation becomes the instrument. The code itself is the instrument that we're playing on. And I think we've seen that in many different forms today, um, that uh, we see some kind of a conflation between the instrument and, and the notation system. But um, I want to talk about um, code as musical scores. Here we see some scores. These are uh, Twitter pieces. 
And this is a common musical practice where you write a piece for the, for the medium of Twitter. And I can play one for you here. If I find the mini jack. <coughs> Probably this one. Yep. to the market forever. It's very enticing somehow. Uh, they feel very human. Uh, I'm not sure which language yet, but, uh, but so, so this is a Twitter piece. It's notation. You share it on, on Twitter. It's these, you know, the constraints of 140 characters. And uh, it's about the medium, Twitter, the textual medium, about sharing that and, and the characters. It's about the word count. That's the kind of art of this, this thing. Um, I want to show you quickly um, my own live coding language, which is called Ixilang. And, and this is a language where you create an agent, and you give it a, a score, and you can play the score. And this is where um, the le letters of the alphabet are mapped to sound. just emerges and you can you can store the states and jump back and forth the snapshots and so on um, super simple it's it's possibly the, the the most simple music technology that you can find the digital uh, music technology let's not forget inputs of paper and pen <laughs> which is probably simpler than this but but you know in terms of uh, making beats with with a computer this is this is extremely easy and and very young children, like four or five years old, can, can learn this and, and play with it. We've used it in workshops. Um, but for me, that's, this is also a language to communicate what I'm doing. The audience more or less understand what's going on. The spaces are silences, characters are sounds, and you have instruments. Um, but I, I began... I wanted to explore a little bit uh, um, microtonal spatial music, so I created another system called Threnoscope, where you have uh, a microtonal uh, kind of space here, and um, and this is a system where I created now a, a, a drone of the second harmonic or a note. And I can do...
much space. And that's what I was interested in exploring here. And um, what I then noticed when I started performing with this was that people really like this um, representation of the score. So if that's the score, this is some kind of a representational score. You could call this, this a, a prescriptive and, uh, score and, and representational score. And when I've been performing with musicians, this often becomes part of what they, they play. Oh, <laughs> thank you, Chris. So that, that's, um, that's basically uh, a little I my input on, on, on live coding as a, as a notational practice as something that kind of merges uh, composition and instrument making at the same time. Thank you. Yes, so I'm happy to take questions if there are any. And whilst the chair is uh, setting up. So the spaces are silences. Yes. So you can but control the length of the note. When you write three, three, four, five, mm. it was not exactly. So I, I think the rhythm. Da, 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 da. Uh, it was in a scale. So I can't remember the scale I was playing yes. in. I, I think three, three, and four, five uh, didn't have exactly the same rhythm, but it was. No, there was no space between three, yes, three, and yes, four, five. Yes, I understand. Oh. I, I can't remember it, what it I did. <laughs> <laughs> it's a live coding. How can you remember this? <laughs> <laughs> it's based on a quaver, if you like. So there was a space there. Yes. So the three was together. It was not da 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 Another way, but simple way to, to mark 
written. Okay. So yes. it's reminiscence okay. yeah. from a, an alternative. Well, I'll send him my software and we can have a conversation. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have to take a now. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. <coughs>